Welcome to my little domestic jungle in which I set up my bullet journal for February. For the February theme I came up with a quite cool idea <laughs> in my humble opinion. But first leave a like to help fight the algorithm. Well I was looking at all the beautiful stationery that I have accumulated <laughs> over the years trying to find inspiration for February and I realized that I have many stickers and designs from different artists and different small shops so I just thought okay let me use all these beautiful stickers so now the plan is that each spread in February I will decorate with stickers from a different shop and since all the spreads will look a little different and have a little different color scheme a little different style I thought I'd just use simple black headers because that just goes well with everything this is also a great opportunity for me to practice my calligraphy more. And I can say that it is always super scary for me to put the calligraphy pen down on paper because once it is there, <laughs> there is no going back. In general, I feel like taking time for calligraphy is the most important thing. It's just important to be aware of the fact that when you see people doing calligraphy in front of camera, they usually super speed up their footage. Another good calligraphy trick in my experience is to start out with the easiest letterings. So every single time that I start doing calligraphy, my hand is still a little stiff and not, you know, smooth enough and not like used to the movements yet. So before using the calligraphy pen in my bullet journal, I write out a few letters on a sheet of paper or I start not with the February header and the calligraphy pen, but with the smaller header just to get my hand back into the calligraphy feel and activate my muscle memory before using the calligraphy pen. As a beginner in calligraphy, I learned that it is easier to write when holding the pen a little sideways like this so that the tip is a little sideways because then when going down with thick strokes, you can use the whole width of the pen to create, you know, the wide strokes. And it is also easy to go up with low pressure and thin strokes. So instead of holding the pen like this and then having to really press down hard to create a thick stroke, in my experience the results are better when holding the pen sideways to get even thicker strokes with way less pressure. However, I still have difficulties figuring out how to do upward movements like these or long sideways movements like here because my feather is somehow always super scratchy on the paper. And you can also see that this line is very squiggly and not smooth. This feature, by the way, I've seen Mochi Bujo doing and I really liked it and decided to try it as well. Oh, and especially when still learning, pre-drawing is super important in my opinion. Because the pencil gives you many, many second chances. You can just erase it and write it again and work on the lettering until you're happy with the result before using ink because ink is quite definite. <laughs> And it is always possible, at least a little bit, to fix some issues after the fact, like I do here. This lettering here again didn't turn out the exact way how I had envisioned it. I wanted this little ornamental ending to be less round but more straight diagonally. But that's how things go. You learn as you go. It's important to be able to tolerate <laughs> your own imperfection if you want to learn. It's not easy, but we're all trying to do our best. And I've learned that my own creations grow on me over time. So this is a place where I catalog my spendings. I know this might not be necessary for everyone because all of this is also listed on your bank statement and everything. But for me, it is important to have things go through my hand in the sense that I write them down just so that I'm more aware of what I am spending and of my consuming behavior. And this is important to me not only because I'm trying not to be lavish or wasteful, but also because I'm trying to consume less to live a more sustainable lifestyle. That's why I log my spendings in two categories, essential and extra. And of course, it is the goal to reduce the extra spendings as much as possible 
So during the month I log my spendings here and there. I first put in the date when I purchased something, then what it was, and then the cost. And at the end of the month I do a summary of all my spendings. This spread I will decorate with the art from Uchibuju and her shop Ikigai Papir, where I bought these three sticker sheets. For the girls, I'm not so sure if I will use them or not. As her Patreon, I also have access to Mochibuju's printables that I have printed on sticker paper here. In the end, it became clear that I ended up just using these. But for the creative process, I gave myself a whole selection of different designs to choose from. To figure out the placement of the stickers, I didn't put them down properly yet, but just, just so that I could still remove them and play around with different positionings. And for this little stamp here, I really tried hard to somehow integrate it, especially since the other artists that I was using for the other spreads had stamps as well, and I thought this would be a nice <laughs> recurring element. But it just didn't belong anywhere, it just wasn't meant to be. <laughs> Playing around with different options is a super important way for me to be creative. Sometimes when people create in front of camera, it looks like the whole composition is all already figured out before the papers and stickers are even placed down. But that is just not how my brain works. And I try to show that in my videos, just to give an authentic representation of the process. For the first weekly, I used the stickers by Album Love Handmade. She is a Polish artist and I love her stuff so much. She has all these vintage, nature, neutral colored themes. And since I'm also her patron, I also have a sheet of digital printables that I printed on sticker paper as well. Again, I try to show you my process of how I put everything down tentatively, rearrange things before I figure out the final composition of how I want things to be and then properly stick everything down. For the weeklies, I like to use the Alistair method or the rolling weekly. And at this point, I smudged the ink because I tried to erase the pencil before the ink was dry. <laughs> so now I try something to fix that and covering it up is always a good trick. All in all, I wasn't super happy with the spread and came back to it later to fix some issues. For the second weekly, I used stickers by Sarah Elise, who used to call herself Plantful, and I got these in form of a happy mail when I was subscribed to her as a patron, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> I've never dared to touch those beautiful stickers though, because they were just too pretty to use, and yeah, I don't know if anyone can relate to this, but finally I found the courage to use them in my bullet journal. What better way to honor these beautiful stickers than to give them an eternal life in my video?
desperately tried to fit in this cute cat. However, it just was too large, it took up too much room. I need the room to write in, so I decided not to have it in there, unfortunately. For the third week, I thought I used stickers from Paper Minty Studio that I have recently ordered. And these moths here are also on this washi tape. However, I also ordered this stamp washi tape that I find very beautiful. And now let's see how I'll use it, what I'll use and what I can make out of these. As you can see, the basic structure for my weeklies is always the same. An event calendar, an Alistair method style task list, an area of notes and a meal plan with a mini shopping list. also ordered these floral and leafy designs that are meant for my plant journal which I will set up in my next video so if you want to see that definitely subscribe but now I was looking for a smaller sticker that fits the spot next to the meal plan header well this yellow rose here was a bit too strong in my opinion and while the red flower was size wise better I craved some more earthy yellow instead of the red next to the header that is already red and that's why I decided for the small yellow one. That's just an example of how I make aesthetic decisions, uh, trying out different things, listening to my gut feelings, <laughs> which combo evokes switch emotions in me and then I just go with what feels best. The final week belongs to planning with Kay. She's just the queen of stickers, and the plants kit are clearly my favorite of her designs. One thing that I particularly appreciate about planning with Kay is that, in my opinion, the sticker paper she uses is just the best from all among the shops that I've used for this setup. The paper feels nice, but it is also super easy to peel off, which is just important for me to allow my creative process to happen. To me, it makes all the difference. Oh, <laughs> behold my magic. To elegantly cover up the problem that I did not record how I wrote out the notes header. The book pile in the corner was too low in contrast to the plant pot that I wanted to place on top of it, color wise. So to get a better contrast here, I decided to change it to the other book pile with a blue book on top that creates a better contrast to the brown plant pot. At this point I was quite happy with most of my spreads, but the Album Love Handmade spread, in my opinion, was sort of missing some flavor. So I used this paper design that I have received as her Patreon to add some more to the spread. And I also used this round frame stamp that is not from Album Love Handmade, but it is clearly her style. And I think these two additional elements made quite a difference. The only thing left now is to decorate the cover page that is at the same time my February calendar spread. I have left this blank before because I wanted to first set up all the individual spreads for each artist to then come back to the cover page where I want to combine all the five artists that I have used in the setup and I wanted to sort of combine essential elements from each spread in this cover page. So in order to do that, I had to create all the individual spreads first, if that makes sense. After knowing how all the individual spread came out, I now could add some Ikigai papir here, <laughs> some Paper Minty Studio there, and of course some planning with Kay and Sarah Ellis slash plant-based must also not be forgotten. 
for the plants here i'm looking for some earthy colors as well however i thought a little blue never hurt anyone don't you think all in all i am pretty happy with how the setup turned out i really like this opportunity to use all these beautiful stickers by all these artists and also to support their work at least in my limited capacities with this video I really like to do that because not only are these small shops and small artists but also women-owned shops from all over the place I've got some Norway in here some Poland um, some West Coast and some East Coast and I really would love to do this again and trying to be even more diverse in choosing which artists I want to invite into my bullet journal I hope you enjoyed this video and I wish you all a happy February.